Hello and welcome back or welcome to the channel. I'm Loudguns and today we're back to report on some more of our 318 testing. We're going to try hunting down one of the largest ships in Star Citizen and see how much extra cash we can scrape out of it with the new salvage mechanics. If this sounds good to you then grab a cup of tea while I roll the intro and then let's get into it. So the plan for our adventure was straightforward enough. Get an Idris to spawn, kill it, then see how much RMC we could scrape off the hull. Some bigger ships like the Aegis Javelin and RSI Bengal have made an appearance in the verse for events like Xenothreat and Fleet Week, but the Aegis Idris is the biggest ship you can consistently get to spawn. A big shout out to my crew from Frontier who helped pull this off. We weathered many a PTU based bug together over a couple of nights, but got there in the end. And I couldn't have tried this without them. If you'd like to hop into our Discord, just use the link in the vid description, and you'll find plenty of events like this to try your hand at a good bit of multi-crew action. The idea behind this test wasn't to do everything in the most efficient way possible. Streamlining it can always come further down the road, and towards the end of the video, I'll go over a few of my ideas for scaling this up, and how we might squeeze some more credits out of it. But this was more of an information gathering exercise. So, step one. Let's think about how to get an Idris to spawn. On the unlawful side, it's possible to summon an Idris by causing enough mayhem. At a certain point, particularly if you're close to a space station, the navy might send one after you. However, a crime stat 5 might make it a bit difficult to do a spot of leisurely salvage. But on the lawful side, you've got two options. The Arlington Gang Mission Chain and Critical Threat Combat Assistance Beacons. The latter are more consistently spawning, so that's the route we chose. Just keep an eye on your contract manager for this Service Beacons tab, and look for the combat ones. You'll have to head to a beacon in dead space and keep some bad guys off a broken down NPC ship or two. Getting our rep didn't take long, particularly by sharing the missions amongst the group then heading off to different beacons in ones and twos to quickly pass through the earlier levels of low threat and moderate. At high threat we tightened up our group a bit to quickly deal with the hammerheads, and within just over an hour of grind slash PTU based crashes we had our first critical threat beacon. Now you've got one to spawn, it's time to go hunting. And at this stage, despite some issues with the friends list not working, we'd managed to assemble a party of eight in our server. So we opted for two redeemers and one eclipse. If you're going up against Aegis, bring some Aegis of your own. The heavily ballistic loadouts of the redeemers were perfect for chewing through a large ship like this, particularly after the changes to ballistics in 318 making it penetrate shields a lot more. And the size nine torps from the eclipse added some punchy alpha strikes. The Eclipse was particularly useful for taking out the Idris's escorting hammerheads quickly, allowing the Redeemers to conserve their ammunition to focus on the main target. We had to send the Eclipse back for a restock once, and one of the Redeemers came back with a reload having expended all of its ammo and missile payload to finish the job. But the explosions were worth the hassle. With the Idris dealt a death blow, it was time to bring in the Reclaimer to see how much extra cash we could extract from the beast. And this is where the PTU really started being the PTU. There's currently a bug with the uh, Reclaimer's Elevator, breaking shortly after you take off in it. So we had a lot of fun and games just getting people to the right floors. But for anyone wondering why 318's taking so long, this sort of thing is why. Still, conveniently another player's already filed a report on the issue council, so let's give that a quick upvote and get it fixed. Still after much workarounding, I'm not sure if that's a word, we managed to get a few of us onto the bridge to operate the pilot's controls and the lasers, and a few of us down to salvage processing to get the boxes moving. And it turns out there's rather a lot of RMC on a dead Idris. Using the trawler module to get the maximum possible speed, this was a school night after all, we started scraping the hull and managed to get boxes churning out rapidly. Compared to the derelicts that are scattered around the Grange points, the rates of extraction were two to three times higher on the main section of hull. We assume this is down to the thickness of the skin on the Idris, and as you can see there's rather a lot of surface area to scrape here. 
A little disappointingly, the extra parts like the engines that have blown off, while they do yield some RMC, don't have such a high extraction rate. So probably if you're doing this for real, you would probably look to just avoid doing those. Long story short, after just over two hours since bringing down the address, we were on our way into Lawville to sell our haul. In total, it came in at 208 SEU. We lost 12 SEU to the first malfunctioning reclaimer that we replaced and a couple of tractor beams that we had to make on account of not being able to freely move around the ship. So let's call that 220 SEU. With a sale price of around 7.7k per box, that netted us just shy of 1.7 million AUEC. And then on top of that we got the 300k for completing the critical threat beacon in the first place. So the total take comes in at about 2 million to share out amongst your crew. That was 8 in our case, so 400k ahead for a session. But while 2 million's nothing to sniff at, now it's time to talk optimization, because as I mentioned in the beginning, we were focusing on a first trial here rather than a streamlined process. First up, we had more people than we needed on the reclaimer. We probably didn't need a health and safety officer for instance. And had everything been functioning and running smoothly, then we could have managed perfectly fine with 5 of us aboard the ship. Also, the ship being bugged out really did stimmy us a little bit. So the inability to transit around the ship cost us a big chunk of time with people up top in the bridge running out of food and water while I was sat with a backpack full of crews down in the processing deck. And all the boxes flying around uh, because we couldn't access the cargo hold itself also set us back a little bit. All in all though, I think with everything working as intended and a bit more practice, not only could we cut the time down to around 90 minutes to strip the hull of the address, we could have probably done it in 90 minutes using the abrade modules rather than the trawlers. The trawlers, due to their much larger surface area, give a higher extraction rate, but its lower efficiency means that there's going to be wasted RMC. And if the efficiency stats of the lasers are effectively percentages, as I expect, then the same area salvaged with only abrade modules would have yielded 284 SEU, taking our kills value up to a little under 2.2 million credits so 2.5 million with the 300k payout from the beacon. But while 90 minutes would be great, it's still probably too slow, since if we're going to be efficient about this, we probably want to split out a kill team and a salvage team. The kill team can probably then bring down more than one Idris every 90 minutes, so we're going to need to bolster the salvage team to keep up. I feel something like this could make for a good operation to take advantage of this mechanic. A shout out to Starjump as ever for their fantastic fleet viewer tool that makes visualising these things so much easier. Our two redeemers and one eclipse will require seven crew and probably be sufficient to keep getting an Idris down every 30 minutes as long as they're spawning. Meanwhile, by bringing our number of reclaimers up to three, each with an optimum crew of five, we can strip the Idris in about half an hour as well. Reclaimers can always bunny hop one another if the kill team is a bit quicker on one and want to move on from that location they're holding. If you could make these numbers work, your crew of 22 people could be making 2.5 million every half hour, or 5 million per hour. And split equally, that's about 227k per head. While this might not sound overly impressive to some of the money-making pros out there, I'd just like to point out a couple of reasons this is far from shabby. One, this is nearly quarter of a million an hour for everyone in your crew. You can get newer players in and working, earning money at a clip far ahead of what they would if they were just sticking to a starter ship. And two, well, it's a whole lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed the video and it's given you a bit of inspiration for what's to come in patch 318. And one of the things I love the most in Starset is try to come up with these ways in which groups of players can work together on a bigger and bigger scale. And I particularly enjoy it when you can bring people together who love different things. Maybe some are more into combat, others into industrial gameplay, and create a greater whole than the sum of the parts. If you think I've earned it, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and sharing the video with your friends, org mates, and that kind of weird auntie you only see at Christmas. It really helps and it would be hugely appreciated. With all that said though, thanks for watching all the way to the end, and I look forward to seeing you next time.